Hey noble ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. Welcome to my 384th video on the TV series Barbarians. No jokes. Today we are looking at a specific combat situation that we have in on episode 2. It's between Arminius, of course, the protagonist, the Roman officer, and he is fighting the nephew of the king he has executed, and I cannot remember the name no matter how many times I've read it before making this video. Now the reason why I've chosen to speak about this specific fight is because to me this is one of the most cringy moment of the entirety of the TV series and I'd like to underline that I actually enjoyed this show quite a lot it was fun it was a lot more historically accurate than usually uh, these sort of uh, TV series that are slightly historically based uh, are so I was really impressed I love the armor I love the weapons and of course I made videos I love the Latin I already have videos you'll find links in the description below but today I'm focusing on this because this is a scene that really drove me mad but as always, if you like Romans, Knights, Samurai, Weapons and Armor, become a Noble One. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. Of course, keep in mind that this is not an attack at the producers and it's just a suggestion. I understand that this is not a documentary, so it doesn't have to be 100% historically accurate. The most important thing is that it's entertaining. I fully understand that, but bear with me. Have a look at the simple suggestions that I have for this video to make it more historically accurate and more fun at the same time. And at the end of the video, if you still think that what they did was the best way to represent this fight, then that's fine with me. Okay, so already off the bat, let's have a look at the armor, the sort of equipment that Arminius is using because this is incredibly important. Now, the armor is really good. It's a Lorica Musculata, Lorica Musculata. It's the sort of muscle cuirass that uh, some Romans use, and I'd like to underline some because this is a very high-end, uh, sort of top-notch, very expensive kind of war technology of the time. Not everyone could afford these sort of musculata. We see the musculata used by tribunes, by generals, by high-end officers. Uh, people who are very wealthy in the Republican time could already afford these, but as we move into the Imperial time, it's mostly officers and people of Imperial position that can wear and afford these sort of very elaborate armors. This goes all the way up to even emperors. In fact, it tends to be the armor of choice of the emperors in the majority of cases, although I'd like to underline that there were different kinds. Then first and foremost, we have to have a look at the highly decorated versions that we sometimes see in statuary and the very plain ones. And this is quite easy to understand. The very decorated one with elaborate decorations, of course, were mostly used to represent a person's status. So these are the sort of armors that we see worn by emperors and these were not most likely intended to be used in war. They were little uh, works of art and they are very Roman. As a matter of fact, the very plain ones instead are very much similar to the sort of muscle cuirass usually made of bronze uh, used by the Greeks that had been used by the Greeks already for quite ton some time and most likely the Romans uh, copied those so the Greeks used generally speaking plain ones the Romans also used plain ones like the one that Arminius is wearing here for real battle and most likely very very wealthy important political individuals would use the very decor decorated ones just to show off their status and wealth. This is not the only two different versions that we have though. We also have two separate versions in terms of size. We have got the short ones and we have got the long ones. Now the short ones are interesting because they are, generally speaking, they function like medieval breastplates. And if you are uh, familiar with uh, 14th century, generally speaking, late 14th century sort of armor, a breastplate would look like this. This is a late 14th century breastplate and one of the characteristics of this that you will immediately notice is the fact that when I put it on, one of the things that you will notice is that it stops, generally speaking, above my navel. So it's not going all the way down to modern day jeans belt, but it's stopping, uh, generally speaking, at a person's waist. This was done to allow mobility because if that extended all the way down to the belt and if it was very close fitting, you can understand how it would be very difficult to bend, to move and do all of those sort of actions and movements that would be very important to be able to do for a soldier or a knight in this case or man-at-arms to be effective. 
perspective on the field. So even though the rounded globular shape is something more of a medieval kind of idea, which it's actually an improvement because it helps hits glance off, Masokuras also had this idea of being short to allow people uh, to move. But that's not always the case. In fact, we also have long ones and the long ones reach the belt. The reason why uh, some people might want to wear muscle cuirass all the way down to modern day belt is obviously to get more protection, but you do lose a lot of mobility, particularly with very close fitting kits. So uh, that's why medieval people, particularly knights and men at arms, preferred to go in the 14th century for a breastplate and underneath the breastplate they would wear mail. So that mail would cover basically the, your gut and, and this would protect instead the upper torso, which is where your organs are, at least the ones that you can't survive if they are punctured. The concept is quite similar to modern um, plate carriers, if you will. Now, in the late Middle Ages, they will come up with another piece of armour uh, made of plate called a placket, and this is more of a 15th century kind of idea, that will go from the lower torso and overlap with this, sometimes even all the way up here, granting you two layers of protection and also allowing you, with the sliding idea, motion. But that would be too advanced for the Romans. He has got a little bit of a long one, so his mobility is not great. Also, what is the armor made of? Well, generally speaking, as far as we understand, muscolata were made of metal. Now, this metal can be copper alloy, it can be bronze, but generally speaking, it would be, particularly at this time, it would be iron and it could be tinned because we know that the Romans did use tinning historically and some people even used tinning on bronze and uh, brass helmets to make them look more like iron just because it was quite fashionable particularly in imperial times. So one thing I'd like to underline is even though this armor doesn't grant great mobility it does grant great protection because it's one solid piece and since it was made for an officer this would be very well made. So when you compare it to a lorica segmentata the musculata he's wearing would be better. Having said that underneath the musculata armor we can see that Arminius is wearing what is called a toracoma or Subarmalis and it's clearly made, made of leather which is fine. They weren't all made of leather but we understand that some could have been so that's that looks okay. So this man is wearing possibly a tunic maybe even two if you know some Romans did that double tunic then a Subarmalis then one of the best kind of armors that the Romans could produce keep this thought in mind. As a weapon of course he's using a gladius his opponent is using a nax. Let's see what happens. Okay, so this is the part that I find really difficult to believe. Three things I'd like to say about this scene. Thing number one, we see that this, okay, this guy, this barbarian, he's very strong, we get that, uh, but he mostly purposely targets the armor of his opponent. Um, he gives, he hits him with a knee, which I think would have destroyed his kneecap against a steel piece of armor, or even iron, doesn't matter, any, anything ferric. He repeatedly hit Arminius on the torso and it seems like he's targeting it. Like that's what it looks like. In a real fight, what we would have seen most likely at the time is that the barbarian guy would have tried to hit the Roman on the arms, in the head, and only and since the Roman moves well, then probably some of the hits might have ended up on it on the torso, which would be protected. A person of the time knows that armor works, so he tries to go around it not hitting it directly in the center of mass. Second problem, and this is the cringiest part, he hits him on the side of the musculata, penetrates it with the axe and wounds him. Now remember when I told you that this man is wearing multiple layers, already the idea of managing to go through lorica musculata so easily, so a steel or iron or whatever piece of armor with an axe so easily, I say no. I say already that's not the case. Uh, it would have been an extremely difficult thing to do given the sides probably were thinner than the center. Uh, this happens as well in medieval armor, but still it would not be that easy. If it were that easy, why even bother spending so much money to cover your officers in that kind of armor if it's that easy to go through? So it's even a, fal a logical fallacy. Secondly, remember this guy, Arminius, is wearing multiple layers as it should be. So this man with one hit without you any, didn't even look that powerful, managed to go through iron armor, leather super malis, possibly a tunic, and cut deep, because I mean, look at this. 
Now, this uh, shot here shows us that yes, we didn't see it wrong, it went through the armor because it's basically uh, where his ribs are, so it, it wasn't like underneath the armor. At one point I even thought maybe it was lower, maybe he hit him where the iliac crest is, but no, it's exactly where the armor is. And it's incredibly deep as a cut, so personally this makes me cringe. 1000% because because I know why they're doing it they're doing this because they want us to see they want us to worry for Arminius they want us to feel like oh gosh he's been wounded in fact there is even a guy screaming it he was wounded it's like yeah, I can see that I they wanted to make sure that we did see that so yeah Arminius is wounded Arminius the protagonist is in distress uh, and we uh, are supposed to be worried about him. We'd be like, oh no, will he make it or will he die? And of course he's not going to die because if he dies that's the end of the TV series and we know there are still like four episodes, but you know, it's just a psychological thing. It's, a, it's subconscious, but the, you can still achieve it and make it believable. The Barbarian could have placed a proper hit on the dominant arm, opening a big wound so we would have seen the blood and it would have been more evident as well because of course now we can't see it because it's underneath the armor anyways. The protagonist Arminius might have lost his weapon at that point and we would have the same sort of oh my gosh what is he gonna do now and, uh, and it would have been more believable uh, without this idea of armor is, is, is just butter because it makes it stupid. I know that I'm over analyzing but this is a big thing particularly for someone who understands how armor actually works and it really gives this idea idea that oh look how stupid the Romans were look how stupid medieval people were cladding themselves in so much expensive armor and then they didn't even do anything it does give the wrong idea and you have no idea how many people because of my channel come to me and tell me oh yeah yeah knights when they fall on the ground they can't get up it's like well it used to now it's become less a few years ago a lot of people said that now probably thanks to all the community for the sort people understood that that's not the case but uh, this idea of at nights that it's so uh, and, and romans and whatnot this armor is so heavy they can't move they can't do anything and of course when you're, 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 when you're strong, you just go through it as if it were nothing, and so they just look like a bunch of idiots. They were not a bunch of idiots. They were professionals. And I'm going to link this to the next following part. My next complaint, this guy is supposed to be a professional, Arminius. Arminius is a professional soldier, and he's also a veteran. He has fought, I believe, in Spain. And therefore, this guy knows real combat. He has been training for years. For him, combat should be muscle memory of the highest finest type. Instead here it looks like he doesn't know what he's doing. Like I understand at the beginning, you know, he's taken by surprise, although is he really since he's actually, you know, telling the guy, he knows that the guy is going to attack him, but maybe, maybe, maybe he didn't, maybe he was naive, I don't know. At first you're caught by surprise, whatever, but after that he looks like he's panicking, he looks like he is, he, he has no balance, he has no footwork. Uh, we will be told later on in the TV series that this guy is a veteran, that this guy has managed to survive crazy odds in combat, and so what I would like to see is proper confidence when he's fighting, and I don't see that. Um, and I'm talking about the sort of MMA George St. Pierre kind of level of confidence. I mean, imagine if this was supposed to be an elite, I don't know, veteran American Marine who has seen a lot of fights, real combat, in war, and then he looks like, what do I do? <laughs> you see, for me, that's no. And again, this is not a critique, it's just a suggestion, please make a veteran look like a veteran, act like a veteran, and I think anyone who's in, is in, in the military here understands my point. But generally speaking, these are the main problems I have th with this scene. The fighter is supposed to be a veteran, doesn't look like it, it doesn't look like a professional at all. The armor is not working, which is like... <sighs> and his opponent doesn't fight like an, a man of the classical period. I think people in the Bronze Age had already figured that one out. Like, don't strike the armor directly because the armor is there to protect, let's try to go around it. You know, this is... <laughs> yeah. But this is a brief video for today. I hope that you enjoyed it. I am working on a another project which I think is going to be great and uh, it's a little bit of a... Well, I already showed you in my community tab, so go check it out. It's about a fantastic tournament of Soul Calibur with custom-made characters to represent all of us channels in the community of the sword. is going to be extremely fun. But as always, if you liked this video, please remember thumbs up and if you are not yet members of this community, become a noble one. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron and I will see you soon for my next upload. 
Thank you very much for watching and remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.